The other night, I found myself scrolling the excellent selection of Battletech audiobooks to pick out something to listen to at bedtimes, eventually settling on a re-listen to part three of the Grey Death Legion trilogy. And then I realised I'd also pretty recently started a fresh playthrough of MechWarrior 5, Battletech's most recent action game. But the point I realised the inspiration chain reaction had started was when I started taking physical book recommendations and hunted down my old Kindle and got it charged. It was pretty clear at this point that I was deep in the throes of borderline obsessive inspiration, and I needed to channel it somehow. The good news was that my leanings have already given me a pretty clear direction here and a chance to tick off one of my hobby to-do boxes. I was going to paint a Merc Lance for the start of my company anyway, this is something I've been meaning to get round to for a while now. Now one of the things I'm always drawn to with Battletech is the idea of painting a military looking lance, and again, it's an idea that's been in my head for a while, so it feels like about high time I pursued it. In terms of the mechs that would form this lance, that was also kind of easy, because I wanted to go with half of the Game of Armoured Combat box to also pursue the goal of having that painted up and ready to use for teaching people how to play Battletech. So our mechs today for this video are going to be an awesome, a Wolverine, a Catapult, and a Locust. Four absolute classics, four mechs I really personally like, and four mechs that make a pretty nice balanced lance. They're all primed for painting and ready to go, so I guess I just need to get on with it. And so to kick off proceedings, I'm going to take advantage of my airbrush first of all. If you were doing something similar though and want to paint along, there's no need for an airbrush here. It will just save some time because this first step is just an all-over base coat of Vallejo Model Color Refractive Green. Absolutely doable with a brush. I'll then follow that up by picking out some areas with Vallejo Model Color US Field Drab. Between these two colours, that forms the core of my military style design scheme. And once both of these are dry, we get to get a little bit messy now. We're going to hit the mech all over with some Citadel Agrax Earthshade. Everywhere, all the nooks, all the crannies. Now, I'm normally not a huge fan of washes because they can sometimes put shadows in places where shadows shouldn't exist. But something like a mech is really ideal for a wash where it will create great separation in all of those panels all over the body. Next up, I'm just going to black out the things that I want black, either because I want black to be the finished colour, or because it's a good undercoat for whatever following colour will be going on afterwards. I don't really want to have any shiny metallics with this military scheme where I can help it, so this will include things like weapons and a lot of things that you might normally think of as metal. After that, everything on the mech needs to start getting some highlight. Initially, this just means building up some mid-tone again with the original colours, where that Agrax has darkened them. Whilst I do this, I do often tend to bring in some texture too to simulate battle damage, especially if I'm trying to paint quickly, because this kind of sidesteps the need for neatness a little. However, eventually, I will start heading for brighter colours on this to pick out some edges and corners. In this case, I'm just lightening all the base colours by mixing in some Viejo Game Colour Cadmium Skin to each of them. If you want to impress your friends by sounding all artsy and knowledgeable, this process is a form of application of the Mother Tone technique. Okay, with all those important processes taken care of, I think the next thing we should do is just sit back a second, have a look, see at what we've done so far. See where we want to go next, maybe. I think the main thing that I want to add, based on what I've got so far, would be some markings. I actually elect to do this in pure white because I want the markings to stand out. Not for selling the tactical look so much, but more for the sake of the tabletop, as a concession to them being, well, miniatures. It's important when designing schemes to remember to strike this balance between visual storytelling and the real world impact needed for making a sub 2 inch tall robot look good from 5 feet away. Next up we're going to have a fun little step now as I get to test drive a new paint. This Hemo Goblin from Turbo Dork was kindly sent to me along with the rest of the latest colours from Turbo Dork by Exit23 Games who I'll link in the description. 
It's a two-tone copper to green kind of color shift deal, so it felt perfect for doing Battletech cockpits. Let's see how it goes. Yep, I'm actually really happy with that. That cool color change effect is, again, a great sell from five feet away, so it will really help these mechs stand out on the tabletop. And my final painting step is always the hardest one to balance. I'm gonna use some thinned down Viejo rust here to add in some streaks and pulls simulating grime. I need to be really careful not to oversell this, but at the same time, I need to do enough of it to make it clear what it is. For my basing, I'm keeping things kind of simple, but doing something I don't often see in Battletech. I'll begin with this fine red sand from Rival Crafts to give me a kind of Mesa vibe. But then I'm going to accent that with some really nice vibrant flock to include the idea of some vegetation in there too. And then comes the moment of truth, I guess. Let's put them all together and see how they look as a finished lance. Well, I'll be honest, I'm over the moon with that. In just a single afternoon, just a handful of hours, I speed painted myself a lovely looking lance, ready to get some games in and managed to film the process for you to come along for the ride. This was great fun, and even if it does end up being a while before I next play some Battletech, it'll be great knowing I have this lance on the shelf and ready to go. Now I did actually plan to show off this display base that I 3D designed as well, with the intention of hitting it with the same basing materials as the lance and having them all beautifully lined up on it. But sadly, I didn't quite have enough time this week to get that ready. However, I have posted it on Colts 3D, the 3D design hosting website, for you to download and print for yourself if you wish. There is a small fee, not much, but I will put a link below to that anyway if you wish to do so. So folks, please don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more great content for games like Battletech, Infinity, Dystopian Wars, and much, much more. If you really love the content and you wish to support the creation of it, you can of course also consider joining me over on Patreon, and again there is a link to that below in the video description. Until next time folks, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye for now.